in this section today uh, we'll i'll walk you through a structure that we recommend we highly recommend is followed for appearing for case study exams across different levels because what we observe over a period of time is that students have the content student have the understanding but when it start when they start to kind of type there is an extra pressure of the clock that is taking in terms of time for every question they kind of still need to recollect their thoughts and because they don't know what the question is sometimes there could be multiple questions so they lose track of what they want to write now what happens is either they miss out on points either the content is incomplete is not adequate in terms of uh, what the invigilator is expecting and sometimes there is also a problem of overlap i am writing a point and i am then repeating the same point and then towards the end of the point answer also i am trying to repeat the same point so you might have written about 800 900 words but effectively when the invigilator reads it is about like 500 words and sometimes it may not be sufficient so what we do is we we'll, i'll tell you the structure that you should follow which will definitely help you to kind of conceptualize your thoughts to put it forward to the invigilator and from an individual perspective also it will help him read it will help him understand your mindset and mindset is what gets evaluated when we talk of the sema exam right now for a typical for a normal question that you have when it is a single question it does not have a lot of sub parts so what happens is in your case study examination you could have two kinds of questions one is you have a trigger in the question and then there could be two or three sub question so when you have two or three sub question they generally tend to be direct so at that point in time you do not have to follow the structure in black and white to the core you can kind of customize you can kind of use some shortcuts also but i am giving you a structure which is typical when you have a single question every question is for a particular duration so if you have a question let's say a single question what i would expect is the range of words that you should use is about 900 to 1100 depending on the content that you have now many students ask me this question that what should be the font what should be this what should be that so when i say 900 to 1100 words i'm basically talking of an arial font at maybe 10 or 11 so we don't have to use a 24 font or a 36 font to kind of increase the number of pages so arial 10 11 should suffice 900 to about 1100 words depending on how much we have to write and what is our typing speed also because typing speed plays a very critical role in the case study exam now when we look at the, when we look at the structure for the case study exam the first and foremost is now you don't have to explicitly write what i am giving you in the structure that okay this is the heading and that is the heading i am just giving you the structure that when you start thinking when you start writing an answer keep in mind that this is what i am trying to attempt first and that is what i am trying to take it forward to the next level now the first element is you need to decipher the problem statement now sometimes it will be a problem statement given to you and sometimes it might be an opportunity statement that might be given to you so it could be a problem statement it could be an opportunity statement so first decipher understand and interpret what is the problem statement what is the opportunity statement now this could be the first para and a following para to this could be what is the impact of this problem statement on the company at this point in time so let's say motivation of employees is not good and that is what is kind of causing uh, productivity to go down so the problem statement is that people are not happy people are not uh, kind of with the organization they don't relate themselves to the organization that is why then productivity levels are going down now when productivity level level goes down cost tend to increase quality kind of goes haywire and then you have you have products which are not very sellable when you not able to kind of produce goods you not be able to get as much sales when you not able to get as, as much sales profitability of the organization kind of suffers so that is what will become the impact of that particular problem statement now when you write the problem statement when you decipher the impact do not go generic now when i say do not go generic i am saying that do not go generic in terms of your generic understanding of different companies the impact of the problem statement should be based on the facts given to you in your pre seen case study so use as much components as much material from the pre seen to kind of help the invigilator understand the impact of the problem statement or the impact that could happen to the organization if you leverage the opportunity statement so using facts from the pre seen is very important now after you've done the problem statement and the impact so this could be a single para this could be about one or two paragraphs so 
that is the starting point now the next element that we need to talk about is for every problem statement and impact for every opportunity statement and impact there will be different ways to do it so what are the solutions that you have to offer now let's say a company is saturated in terms of its sales to customer and there is competition coming in so what are the solutions to increase sales one it could be new products second it could be aggressive marketing third it could be maybe diversifying into a different country to kind of make use of the demand available so let's say i'm a company working in the us market us market is saturated for multiple reasons it could be the disposable income it could be the economic conditions it could be the gdp growth all those elements so one of the solution that uh, can i go and set up a business in the asia market now different solutions are available and this is what comes out so when we do a swot analysis whatever opportunities are available to it so that is the opportunity statement for every opportunity statement so for me to lever an opportunity statement i will have different solutions available and these are solutions there is no right there is no wrong it is how you justify and how you deliver the impact to business so the next is you write down three four solutions available now that will also depend upon the problem statement and the opportunity statement sometimes it might have many sometimes it may have a little less so three four solutions is what kind of we recommend that we offer now what is the impact of these solutions to the business right now if, if you have three four solutions some may be implementable in the short term some may be implementable in the medium term and some may be in the long term so you don't have to explicitly mention that short term medium term long term you said that this is something that the company should outrightly go into and this is something that the company should plan for so let's say you want to increase the sales so marketing aggressive marketing different unique ways of marketing could be something that the company goes out and does right at that particular moment setting up a research and development department to kind of invest in product development capability that is something the company should do in the short to medium term so that in the long term we get a bigger and diversified product portfolio available so for every solution what is the impact think of these solutions and impact from a short term medium term and long term perspective now the most important element when you offer solutions when you write solutions students only focus on writing the solution and sometimes focusing on the impact but many a times what they miss miss is what is the risk what are the risk associated with a particular solution so you might say that i want to set up a new plant in a particular location and that will help me produce more but setting up plant one you need to have the you need to do a feasibility study you need to understand how much time will it take then for setting up plant you will not have enough cash to kind of invest a cash cash into setting up a plant you will have to borrow loans when you borrow loans there is an impact on debt equity there is an impact on interest service coverage ratio there is an impact on gearing there is an impact on profitability dividend all of it so that element is one that we observe over a period of time students tend to forget so when we recommend solutions though we look, need, need to look at impact definitely because that is why we giving those solutions you also need to recommend the risks now sometimes it could be that you are a marketing manager and you need to give a marketing strategy now marketing people are not finance experts they may understand basic finance but for them to kind of understand the nitty gritty of the finance they need to refer to the finance community so it is acceptable in an answer that if you as a marketing manager say that these are four marketing strategies this will be the impact on the organization in terms of sales in terms of customer retention in terms of profitability but you can also mention that we need to also seek a detailed in view or analysis from the finance team in terms of any element that could impact on us not being able to deliver this so that is acceptable you don't have to act in the capacity of finance manager and give everything but yes if there is something a basic analysis that you can present you should definitely do that but you can still leave it by saying that for more detail analysis we need to connect with the finance team we need to connect with the finance manager we need to take their input so that is acceptable so once you decipher the problem statement the impact go to what are the solutions available it will never be comprehensive and every student will have a different solution to it some might want to go for a social media marketing some might want to go for a physical marketing and they will have different strategies around it whatever strategies cover the impact also highlight the risk so this could take about another two paragraphs and this will be your maximum coverage in terms of words will be and last is you end with a final recommendation and or a maybe a conclusion 
So you look at a recommendation, you look at a conclusion. Now when you say a recommendation or conclusion, I am not saying that, say that, okay, out of four options, two is the best. Out of four options, one is immediately doable. For two, they will need some research that needs to happen. For three and four, the company might have to look at a bigger project plan. There are more deliberations required to it. So my recommendation is do solution number one, keeping in mind that this is a dependency. Focus on solution number two as well because in the long term, it could give a bigger impact. Now the one of the ways is let's say you are falling on sales and marketing is one, second is developing new products. But the third would be when I talk of marketing, can I also do an analysis that okay, which product is giving me the maximum contribution? A product giving me maximum contribution is, is a product that the company should focus on because in terms of an ROI, that will drive more profitability for the organization because of higher margins. So though the company should focus on marketing all its products to create awareness and demand amongst customers, product X should be a higher focus as it tends to give more contribution to the company and there is a potential that it can be converted into a star product. Now if you remember your Boston Consulting Group matrix, stars are the products that companies will want more of because stars get converted into cash cows, cash cows give you maximum sales and cash cows also help you run other products which are not so profitable. Now another common question that students ask is that why we write this answer, do we have to write specific models, do we have to draw specific models, so first of all you don't have to draw any diagrams. Our experience so far with SEMA case studies is they do not ask you a lot of calculation based questions. There may be application of finance but there are not a lot of calculation based questions. If you know there is some model that fits into it, you can use reference points. So let's say when you do an impact analysis, you could use that if I look at the Porter's five forces in the current scenario, due to economic conditions, the bargaining power of customers is weak, which is an advantage for the organization. Now that reference is relevant, but you don't have to explain to the invigilator what is bargaining power of customer, what is Porter's five forces. Do not waste time in doing that because your reference around Porter's five forces tells the invigilator that you understood the model but if you are able to apply that model to the particular question here that is what the invigilator is looking at so to that point you can be specific but otherwise focus your answers generic thoughts generic solutions generic recommendations impact risk but when you look at solutions when you give at recommendations all these components you have to use facts from case study this is of utmost important and i'm sure all of you know that when you do a case study analysis a pre despite the fact that pre is given to you you also are recommended to do an industry analysis industry analysis will